Hi, I'm Mike Roy from artistmyth.com, and in this course, we're going to be talking about how to build your very own artist website, even if you have zero technical skills. It's going to be pretty easy. I'm going to walk through step by step a little later in this course exactly how to uh, set up your hosting, how to set up your site, how to add your artwork to it. And trust me, if you're not really into the technical thing, you're going to be able to do this. If you can do email, then you'll be able to build your own website on WordPress. So let's get started. So first of all, let's talk about why do artists need their very own self-hosted website? And if you wonder what I mean by self-hosted, I don't mean it's going to be on your own computer in your house. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. But basically, it's a website that you get to control. It's your site on your own platform. You get to decide what gets on it. So in, ter in terms of talking about why we need our own site as creatives, as artists, the number one reason, you can control what's on that site. You get to decide everything that goes on your website. If you want to put your work on it, if you want to put specials, if you want to ask people for, uh, for their email address, if you want to post certain, as many notifications as you want or as many, blog as many times as you want, you can do that with your own website. You can use it to build your very own audience, right? Uh, you can ask for people's email addresses. You can follow up with them. You can gauge their interest in something and reach out to them and build that relationship that's so critical for us as artists. It also just makes you look professional. Imagine going to your very own website. That it, For instance, my site is MikeRoyArtist.com. I use that for my video and, and all those different kinds of things. It's sort of my portfolio site. Um, but I wouldn't feel very professional if it said microartist.blogspot.com or microartist.weebly.com. Uh, those free site providers, you have to use their don domain. You can pay for your own domain name to point to theirs, but um, just by default, the free service, you just you have to use their domain. So having your name in your site makes it look so much more professional. Having your own site also just gives your creative business a home base. Uh, imagine if you were in the brick and mortar world and the physical world and you had an, a physical online gallery. You would, it would have a physical presence. You would, have, you would pay rent. Uh, you would get to decorate that store however you wanted, that gallery however you wanted. Uh, and it would be sort of the home base for your business. Same thing with with your website. It's your very own piece of internet real estate. You can also measure your stats and visitors. You can know how many people come to your site. You'll know what days they come. If you blog or post certain things, you'll be able to gauge what people are interested in by how often they visit and look and comment and, uh, and share those things. You'll be able to share all of that stuff with your very own site. And then finally, very important, you can use it to sell your work. We don't want to be starving artists. That's one of my foundational things that I, that I teach is even if you do art as a hobby, make a little money from it because who knows, it could grow into something more uh, and that completes the cycle of sharing your work is having actual buyers that are willing to buy your creative output and you will be able to do that on your own site. So why not use one of those freebie websites for your portfolio website? Well, there's a number of reasons. Number one, it will look unprofessional. Your domain name won't have your full name on it, just your name. It'll have, like I said, it'll have your name.weebly.com or your name.wordpress.com or whatever if you use one of those other providers. Uh, it probably will have ads on it that you don't want and can't control. Imagine people going to your gallery and then, they see maybe some cigarette ad at the bottom. You can't control what ads are going to go on your site if you have that. Also, you're limited in building your own audience. A lot of those site providers, they don't allow you to uh, ask for people's email address or they don't provide easy ways for you to get their email address. That's their audience. They're, trying to, they're using you to build their audience and for whatever it is they're trying to sell. Uh, they don't have a vested interest in helping you build your own. And building your own audience is just so huge for you as a creative person. It's very important you do that. Also, it's going to be inflexible. You're going to have limited options for upgrading that. If you want to 
have some extra functionality to your site, you're going to run out of the, the free options pretty quickly. And so when you want to start upgrading what you do, then that's a lot of times that's where they get you to. That's where they start getting you on a paid thing. They get you in a position and then you have to pay for a bigger, uh, faster speed or more features or whatever. Also, you, you may not be able to sell your work as, as I mentioned, you know, if you want to go pro with this and start selling your work or even just sell it on the side, you may not be able to do that. Uh, wordpress.com for instance, wordpress.org, I should say. Um, no, it's actually wordpress.com. If you, if you can get a free site on wordpress.com, which is different than the WordPress I'll tell you about in a little bit, but, um, they actually, because it's freeware, they don't like, they don't allow you to sell your work from the site that's in their terms of service. And then finally, you'll have, you, you may have limited speed and bandwidth. As I mentioned, you may have to upgrade for, for, that, uh, for that benefit. Uh, speed is, of course, site speed. Uh, bandwidth is like how many people can come to your site at one time. So, for instance, if you share your work and it kind of goes viral, which we all want, right? But if thousands of people all of a sudden come to your site at once, that free host is going to limit that it's not or, or it may even pull your site down altogether thinking that you're doing something spammy or uh, illegitimate which you're not you just something just went viral and so uh, you definitely don't want that to happen and then just the overarching reason that you don't want to you don't want to build your house or your business or your gallery on borrowed land you don't want to couch surf for a place for your creative business to live because let's face it free isn't really free when you look at it there are strings attached there's fine print and you're going to be spending a lot of time building something that is really on sinking sand it's shifting sand it's not something solid to build your business on having your very own self-hosted website is going to provide that foundation to build your business the great news is it's very very cost effective to do so with the method i'm going to show you and if you take my step-by-step -step directions, you don't have to hire a person. You don't have to go outside. If you can do email, then you can build your own self-hosted website. And you'll see in the upcoming lessons exactly how to do that. So stay tuned.